Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Stephen Tong, uh, head of SAP.io Foundry, uh, APJ based in Singapore. Welcome to the SAP.io Energy and Natural Resources Demo Day. Demo Day is an event where we celebrate the achievements of the startups that have been working with us for the past three months. All the startups presenting today have integrated their solution with SAP, and we can't wait to show you what they have done. We have a packed agenda of five startups sharing with us uh, their solutions, as well as a panel discussing on the topic of corporate startup innovation. So without further ado, I would like to invite Lalita Baskara, Vice President of SAP.io Foundries, APJ and Greater China to share with us her opening address. Lalita, please. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Welcome everybody to this uh, Energy and Natural Resources Demo Day of SAP.io Foundry. As Stephen mentioned, Today marks an important milestone in this partnership journey for SAP as well as our startups. SAP IO program brings this power of SAP to help innovators start up and scale up with SAP and deliver value to our customers. The last 13 weeks has been an incredibly exciting journey working with you all. It's an absolute honor and pleasure to be part of this ecosystem in Australia, New Zealand, as well as in the broader Asia Pacific and Japan markets. Firstly, I would like to recognize the commitment our startup founders and families had to this program. Given the COVID situation in ANZ and the rest of the world, we are not out of the woods yet. And a big thank you to you and your commitment. We could also have not done this uh, without the executive support of Damien, president of ANZ and his leadership team. Thank you very much our product and go-to-market mentors who helped us select these amazing startups as we were battling with this pandemic situation. They work in uh, their daily jobs uh, at SAP, uh, mentoring uh, the startups to build value proposition in the context of SAP solutions. We really could not have come this far without your support. A very big thank you. The amazing SAP IO core team, um, Chris, Anton, Stephen and ST to successfully bring everyone together, both in Australia and New Zealand, as well as globally across the IO teams, um, and providing this amazing experience for our startups in a virtual format. Thank you, and really proud of what the team has come this far. The past 13 weeks, we built a partnership of true collaboration, trust, and friendship. And this is a truly a rewarding experience for us, and we look forward to this continued partnership with you all. Thank you. And now welcome, Damien, Stephen, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Loitha, and uh, welcome to everybody involved in, in, this, in this today's session. I, I'd like to sort of start by just giving a, a, a bit of a perspective, and that is that opportunity is really a function of conditions, or it's certainly supported by conditions. And some people are better at reading those conditions than others. And I think this is where entrepreneurial spirit finds some of its energy and it's where it applies its focus. And if I was to think of the Australian and New Zealand market, um, energy and commodity markets extraction industries account for nearly 25% of the nation's GDP. Um, you know, this amounts to something in the order of about $300 billion per annum. And next year it's in, expected to expand by another 7%. This creates a very significant market and a great opportunity. And if I think about the recent acquisition by Square of Afterpay, it demonstrates that Australia is a place where you can innovate, you can create value for companies, consumers and society. So I think this is a, a very exciting place. When I look at the investment that we have made here in Australia around the asset intensive COE, it's also recognition by SAP that Australia is a good place to invest that we have customers that we can collaborate and innovate with. Interestingly enough, enough though, more than 80%, more than 80 SAP customers operate in the, in the mining industry, oil and gas in the extractive industries, and many of the major organizations focused on the energy market are also SAP customers focused on, on distribution, focused on retail generation and, and the network side. So it's certainly a very target rich environment, but one of the key principles coming out of SAP's recent uh, Sapphire was that no business does business alone. And the opportunity for SAP to work with a set of innovative, creative minds that have both the inspiration to follow their dreams and the courage um, also to, to sort of pursue them 
is a great opportunity for SAP and, and for those partners. And this is where um, for the five organisations involved today who have spent the last three week, uh, last three months integrating their capabilities with SAP platforms and SAP products, where the SAP IO um, framework and architecture becomes a critical opportunity for not only those organisations, but SAPs and SAPs customers. Interestingly, uh, the five participants operate in areas very crucial to the energy and natural resources, operating in areas that look at efficiency and effectiveness in the way that mining operations would work, areas where the focus on wellness and sustainability, which is an ever increasing focus of organisations operating in that industry. So I think the moment uh, for these type of focus solutions is, is here and now and the opportunity is uh, very ripe and the ability for us to work collegiately together is something that uh, both uh, my, myself, the asset intensive COE, more broadly the SAP IO uh, organisation and the SAP ANZ team are very excited about sort of pursuing. And to that end, I would encourage very strongly all of the SAP um, industry teams involved in today's discussion to reach out actively to the, uh, to the, to the startup organisations. These products will, in due course, um, be available in the SAP, um, uh, SAP app marketplace, where customers would be able to procure these as endorsed SAP solutions, um, having done the appropriate integration work and, and achieved the, the certifications. So this is a great way to seize the moment and the opportunity I referred to at the start that SAP is not in a position to deliver to our customers everything that they would like, but in increasingly opening up ourselves and embracing partner and ecosystem that we're able to offer a richer set of capabilities and value to our customers, as well as incubate and create opportunities for some of the brightest young minds and older minds in this, in this country who understand those markets and those situations and have worked hard to explore how they can make those opportunities real. So, Aletha, I'm really thankful for you and the team and the work that you're doing and the, the SAP uh, Energy and Natural Resources uh, teams and asset intensive teams specifically who are working with, uh, with these great organisations. And we look forward to uh, future progress and great, uh, all, all the best today for what I'm looking forward to be will be a really exciting and illuminating a demo day. So back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Damien. The first startup that we'll be pitching today will be Navis. To kick things off for us, I would like to invite Navis mentor, Dr. Nicholas Nicolodis, to introduce Navis. Dr. Nick, please. Thanks, Steve. Look, I was, I was really excited about this, uh, this particular uh, topic and particular product. So happy to introduce Navis from uh, who, who've got a very interesting product around visualizing assets and being able to capture information about uh, asset and pain points around. So let me introduce you uh, to Nico from, from uh, Navis and, and hand it over to you. Thanks, uh, Nico. Yeah, thanks a lot, um, Dr. Nicholas, for, for the introduction. So hey, I'm Nico from Navis and I'm manager for strategic partnerships in EMEA. So Navis is one of the global leaders in indoor spatial intelligence. Essentially, it means that we allow to capture environments as photorealistic digital twins and bridge the gap between the physical and the digital world. So in very easy terms, you can think of Navis like a sophisticated and enterprise-grade version of Google's Review, but the data is fully owned and controlled by the customer. So really, essentially, you get a facility at a click of your fingertip. And that's what we call a digital twin. And our main customers are large industrial clients such as Siemens and Daimler. And these customers use Navis to increase the efficiency in all kinds of processes in their facilities. Um, the concept of a digital twin is to have an as-is representation of a given facility, which can be accessed from anywhere remotely. Navis allows to create digital twins and to interact with them as followers. So on the left, we capture buildings with the Navis mobile mapping systems. So these devices take pictures and have LiDAR sensors capturing point clouds of the facility, and they are designed to capture large spaces such as entire factories. And capturing facilities is, offers, is offered as a turnkey service worldwide by Navis to our clients. In the middle, we have Ivion, our web-based viewing technology, with which digital twin can be accessed. It is really meant to uh, to make the data easy accessible and let's one interact with the data. 
On this level, we can as well connect the data viewer with an SAP database, such as the Asset Intelligence Network, to bring SAP machine data, for instance, equipment data or maintenance data, into the context. Additionally, once you've captured an area, we, en we enable as well an indoor positioning with your phone, and such enable advanced workflows like defect reporting with precise geodata. With our clients, we see three main areas of application. I'm starting with the left with global operation and think of a person who manages several facilities worldwide. So critical decisions as new product introductions are often based on incomplete factory documentation and require an extensive travel. So now this IVN allows for remote visits to visually inspect and compare different sites to reduce travel by up to 20 to 40 percent. In the middle, we have equipment relocation use cases. So think of a company which wants to move a production line from one site to another. Outdated and incomplete documentation of both the giving and the receiving facility is a source of mistakes in the planning process, which causes project delay and high cost of late changes. Another IVON can be used for visual inspections in these factories remotely to reduce the cost for these late changes and as well to, to reduce the planning errors by 10 to 30 percent. And on the right, we have prepared maintenance use cases. You can think of a maintenance technician receiving a work order to get a specific machinery fixed. So time is wasted in locating machines and identifying required tools for repair, which leads to high maintenance costs and low first-time fix rates. So here, Navis Ivion is utilized to pre-plan and prepare a visit before actually going there to increase the first-time fix rates and to reduce the resolution time significantly. This is as well the focus use case together with SAP and I'd like to show you a short video to demonstrate solution and integration with the SAP Asset Intelligence Network. So, so essentially that's Laura and, and what, she's, what she's receiving right now is a work order in the SAP Asset, um, Asset Manager. Um, essentially in her task is to get a specific theory fixed. And right now what she's trying to do is actually to prepare her visit on site. And, and she's basically just having the, uh, the location of, of, the, of that machinery um, in a city. Um, right now, what, what Laura can use to really prepare her plan um, on site is the joint solution between SAP and NAPS. And on the left, you see essentially the geometry we've created of that facility in which she starts navigating around. So right now she can really look around, um, see the machinery, and on the right side, you already see this piece of equipment which shall get fixed. Right now, what, what she's opening up is the, is the integration of Navis and P. And then on the left side, you really see the SAP data in visual context. So, so it's essentially the same data which she has in the SAP Asset Intelligence Network. Additionally, she sees the subcomponents of, of that machine and really understands which kind of spare parts she would need to bring. Of course, what, what, she, can, what she can display as well is additional data beyond SAP, such as um, yeah, a short video of, of maintenance instructions, or as well a PDF showing a little bit more detail to, to that machinery. Additionally, to, to further prepare her plan on site, um, she can, for instance, take measurements like, like the height of the machinery to really understand if she would need to bring a ladder or an additional folding stool to, to get that machinery fixed. So to, to, to really wrap it up, so, so what we've been showing here is an optimized maintenance planning workflow, and that's, that's essentially based um, on, on better pre-planning, which leads to higher first and fixed rates and thus reduce travel and cost. So and that already tops the, the end of my presentation. So thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you very much, Nico. Next up, we'll have a time shifter and introducing time shifter will be Chris Gill. Can you invite Chris? Yeah, having engaged with various asset intensive industries over my 10 years with SAP, the health and safety of both employees and contractors is critical and a reoccurring theme. The health and safety of workers is even more acute where the workers are fly in, fly out, shift based and 24 by seven. The opportunity over the past few months to work with the US based innovative and award winning organization, which has successfully integrated with SAP success factors for work scheduling lays the foundation for an exciting future of dynamic neuroscience based resourcing. With that in mind, it's my pleasure today to introduce Mickey Bayer Clausen, founder of Timeshifter. Please welcome Mickey. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, <clears throat> Yes, so um, as Chris mentioned, my name is Mickey Bayer-Klaus and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Timeshifter. 
Um, and today I will go through uh, TimeShifter's new revolutionary app for shift workers and the um, very exciting integration we've done with SAP success factors. There are a lot of um, uh, benefits of, um, of employing shift workers, but there are also a lot of negative consequences. Um, and according to uh, various studies, the cost of a, a shift worker is an additional about additional $10,000 a year. And that comes from increased risk of accidents, high absenteeism, high employee turnover, health implications, both long and short term, or short term poor quality uh, of life, and lost productivity. And these uh, consequences um, are obviously some that you uh, are familiar with, and certainly your shift workers. The negative consequence of shift work uh, I result of shift workers doing things at the wrong time. So sometimes your shift workers, they sleep during the day. Sometimes they work and eat during the night. And by changing their sleep, wake and light dark cycles, they disrupt their circadian rhythms. Circadian disruption affects almost every biological system in our bodies. So most of us understand the connection between our circadian rhythm and sleep. But sleep is only one of the systems that the circadian rhythm is regulating. It actually regulates almost every system, including lung function, heart function, immune function, glucose regulation, kidney function. So um, it's, it's a quite uh, impactful uh, system. Here are a couple of, uh, of, of new information that came out recently. One is that shift workers are three times more likely to be hospitalized for COVID-19. So night shift workers, it was a study with night shift workers, and um, it's because their immune function is weakened. Um, the body doesn't expect that your shift workers is going is to work during the night, and therefore their immune function is, is, uh, is, is, is low. <clears throat> Another uh, interesting piece of information that I think is relevant in this context um, is that about half of organizations in the U.S. at least with mostly blue collar workforce found it hard to retain workers. Workers, they, they don't, um, obviously when it's a hard environment and um, um, including being a shift worker, uh, many are looking for other opportunities. And this is something that, you know, I, I know um, you're looking at addressing because this is a worldwide phenomena. And um, I think that... Um, uh, our solution is, is going to be able to help. Anyway, um, employers are already doing different things to minimize some of these problems. Um, and some are doing more than others. Obviously, uh, it, it, items or approaches that have been applied uh, more and more is optimizing shift work schedule design, screening for clinical sleep disorders, installing alertness, promoting lighting. But shift workers are still left to deal with this akin disruption that follows changing work schedules on their own. Today, there is no individualized solution to help them manage the negative effects. So when, they, when, when your shift workers are leaving the work, um, they don't know what to do. They don't know when to sleep. They don't know when it would be appropriate to see light, avoid light, or eat. Um, it's up to themselves to try to figure out which is uh, problematic. So that's why time shifter comes into the um, equation. It's an, it, it'll be an entirely new way for shift workers to optimize their sleep alertness, health and quality of life. And this app uh, is going to help them tackle the underlying problem of circadian and sleep disruption, not just the symptoms. And it'll work regardless of what work schedule they've been given. So the app will provide highly personalized advice. Each shift worker's sleep pattern, chronotype, work schedule, and personal constraints and preferences will be the basis of highly personalized advice. Um, and just to give you a, an idea, we've actually worked with uh, many organizations already on shift work. Uh, so although the app is new, we have uh, extensive experience. Here is some of the members of the Mars Perseverance rover mission where we help them shift work on Mars time. So in addition to helping them shift work, we also kept them on, on Mars time, which is 24 hours and 37 minutes. We've gotten a tremendous amount of awards and, um, and endorsements. Here you see a few things. We recently um, um, received a, an award from Fast Company. We have a Global Wellness Institute um, behind us. In fact, we're speaking again uh, at their, at their um, 
annual event here in 1st of December. All right, so how does it work with SAP success factors? Um, this is a really exciting integration in that it's a extremely quick and effective way for an employer to deploy the time shifter app. Initially, this is where the you can go to activate the time shifter app in the app center. When you do that, you can select what shift workers should receive the time shifter app. On an ongoing basis, invitations are emailed to new shift workers, not only the ones you selected initially, but also new shift workers coming on board. And subscription will be canceled ongoing when people leave. What's almost more exciting is that uh, the, this is also creating the best user experience for the shift workers themselves. So the shift workers will initially get an invitation um, to time shift or via email. They can accept or decline that invitation. If they accept that invitation, they answer a few questions in the time shifter app. And then on an ongoing basis, their work schedules will be imported automatically. So they don't need to sit there and add them manually, which I'll get back to in a second. And the advice will always be ready for them to follow. The app will deliver to them the exact guidance they need to tackle the underlying cause of circadian disruption. So if we didn't have this app success factors integration, the shift workers would need to add their, their schedules manually. So every single time they had a new schedule, they would sit there and, 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 and put it into the app, um, which uh, it's still intuitive and easy, but it's certainly not very quick and seamless. And we know that a friction, frictionless experience is, is very important in this context and for these, for these people. So it's a big um, it's a big win. The other thing that the integration does is it updates their schedules automatically. So if there's anything in their schedule that changes, that updates in the app, and the advice is automatically updated as well to give them uh, at any given time, giving them the right information. On an ongoing basis, uh, our customers will receive a monthly engagement and impact report that shows the, you know who's using it, not. Uh, their personalized information or personal information, but from a demographic standpoint, as well as uh, the impact, uh, um, which is based on um, surveys that we do with the users. And this is just the beginning of this integration we're doing with SAP success factors. We're going to build multiple new features that go even beyond this functionality. We'll be able to, in the future, build shift work schedules based on circadian profiles. So what people are best for different shifts. Um, we'll be able to help find the best replacement if somebody calls in sick, what, what person is available that would be good and, and not uh, fatigued at the time of the shift. And we're also looking for ways to prevent shift workers from carrying out dangerous activities when fatigued. So very excited about this integration. Thank you so much for, for including Time Shifter in this, uh, in this program. Thank you very much, Mickey. Coming up next will be Streamwise. And introducing Streamwise will be Juliana Brewer. Juliana, please. Hi, Stephen. Thank you. I'm Juliana Brewer. I'm a solution expert with a focus on sustainability at SAP. So Streamwise has a very important offering that helps our customers, like miners who operate in remote locations, to manage their wastewater. It leverages real-time data and uh, and from coming from sensors and it provides accurate, actionable insights um, using machine learning and AI. Now, water is an extremely important natural resource and it is one of the top KPIs that must be included in all corporate ESG reporting. And due to the impact of climate change, we can expect an even bigger focus will be put on water in future. So the streamwise solution will help not only to reduce the regulatory risk of potentially adverse impacts to the environment, but it can also contribute to the shift that we see in mining today to positively contribute to these local communities. So let me hand over so we can all hear more about Streamwise. Thanks, Juliana. Hi everyone, I'm Richard Nyhoff and I'm a Territory Sales Manager with Streamwise DR. 
And Streamwise DI is an enterprise AI software company enabling digital transformation of industrial applications that realizes environmental and economic benefit for operations of all sides in line with the transition to industry 4.0. Effectively, what we're doing is turning on the lights to operations that are happening every minute of every day in the industrial market, driving increased performance, increased operational awareness, and we provide easy to understand solutions in complex and unique applications. Industrial water treatment is particularly ripe for digital transformation as most of these systems are dealt with locally and when they are connected they are often independent with limited clarification of what the issue is. These systems and operations have significant operating budgets too with limited visibility of current operational efficiency, issue notification and what the solutions could be. So this clarity, operational assistance and solution definition is what Streamwise DI brings to the market. And it's a significant market. Just in Europe, North America and Australia, the total addressable market is 60 billion USD and rising. And as around 80% of wastewater is returned to the environment without being adequately treated, there is a significant need for improvement. It is estimated that the economic loss within the OECD group of countries from polluted water supply and poor sanitation is 260 billion USD per year. And the estimated cost of water security as a result of polluted water to irrigators is around 90 billion USD per year. Streamwise can help these customers improve these operations. So within Streamwise DI platform, we have developed QBR, quantum behavior recognition, to tackle the challenges of simplifying and understanding complex and unique industrial applications to provide customers with a straightforward way to understand operational efficiency potential and what they need to do to get to that potential. And when they are there, our platform delivers management tools to keep operational efficiencies maximized. QBR is what sets Streamwise DI apart, and this is our proprietary engine. Put simply, QBR enhances machine learning to significantly increase the percentage accuracy to a level not yet seen within the industrial water settings. It's an absolute game changer. QBR identifies the most efficient method for achieving a fully optimized function of connected devices or equipment critical to the water treatment process. And then delivers data interpretation, prediction, and evidence-based decision intelligence with an accuracy that is a significant improvement on the industry standards. Now SAP integration is delivered by offering a UI extension and API integrations with SAP's AIM platform. Using these integrations, data from our solution could be associated with the equipment in SAP AIN. Additionally, SAP AIN users can see notifications issued by Streamwise DI platform when any unusual behavior is detected. So users can follow up with these notifications by analyzing relevant data in the Streamwise DI platform and by creating work orders directly from the Streamwise DI platform to be actioned in SAP AIN. The customer journey typically takes as little as two weeks depending on the site application. And this journey begins with digitization of raw data, transforming into actionable data that drives actionable insights and where required preparation for automation of key assets. So here's a system architect, Abu, narrating a video showing how it works. We are following the example of a mining site that uses a clarifier for primary treatment of their wastewater. The clarifier has been set up in AIN along with their other equipment. There's a notification that has been automatically pushed through the Streamwise DI platform that we are investigating now. It says that the pH is out of compliance. This is an alarm based on our sensor data, so an operator has been notified by SMS as well. The user heads to the Streamwise DI portal to investigate further. Here you can see the alarms history and configure alarms. In the analytics page, you can see an overview of the performance of the wastewater treatment plant. Here, the user has set up some informative gauges and charts. We can confirm that there has been a pH breach. The user heads to the deep dive tab to create a work order. Through here, they can also view some actionable insights and live video feeds. We want to request for an operator to confirm that the pH probe is reading correctly before making any changes. This work order can then be actioned through AIN and an operator can test to confirm the data. The operator finds that the pH probe is reading correctly and proceeds to create further work orders to improve compliance. So Streamwise DI benefits customers by increasing compliance, increasing operational visibility and communicating operational issues so they can be dealt with before they become a problem. We increase personnel management efficiency by providing live, remote and easy to understand detail of how the plant is operating 24 seven. 
And ultimately this benefits the bottom line as this information results in less waste of costly inputs, lower compliance charges and increased operational efficiencies, which is demonstrated by the case study shown. And the case study for the cereal manufacturer uh, delivered significant benefits to the OPEX by vastly improving the chemical efficiency, improving compliance and reducing related contaminant charges. And we were able to effectively turn the operation of the system into an unmanned automated chemical dosing operation, which met the site's requirements of improved performance while making more efficient use of the people's time on site. And regarding our market, the target market, Streamwise DI is active at the moment across Australia and New Zealand, and we're planning to enter Europe and North America in FY23. The current industry served to food and beverage, primary industries, utilities, mining, and heavy industrial sites, but the potential market is practically anywhere where water is used beyond domestic applications. SAP's significant existing network would help Streamwise DI connect with our customers to benefit the customer, SAP, and Streamwise DI. The transformation to Industry 4.0 represents the fastest growing enterprise software market in history. And McKinsey expects that this transition will generate more than 13 trillion USD of added value annually. And Streamwise DI, particularly with partnership with SAP, is very well positioned to help deliver this benefit to operations all over the world. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, corporates are increasingly partnering startups in accessing the latest innovation available in the market. We have invited two panelists uh, to join us today to you know, share with us their experience on this uh, increasingly important topic of interest. I'd like to invite Mike Ellis and Chris Law to join me in the panel. Mike, Chris, please. Hi, uh, Stephen. How are you doing? Hello. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. Maybe we can uh, kick things off by having you introduce uh, yourself as well as the company that you are working for. Great, well, Stephen. So Mike Ellis from uh, Rising um, HCM. I'm the president for the Asia Pac region. Um, Rising is um, a pure play SAP focused organization. Um, we're, we're globally located across 13 countries. Um, in the Asia Pac region, uh, five of them, uh, Australia, uh, New Zealand, Singapore, Malaysia, and the Philippines, um, really have three divisions. So um, consumer industries, um, enterprise asset management, and uh, HCM, which is uh, the organization that I run. Um, and for us, uh, really, it boils down to, uh, I think, what, what uh, our, we believe our clients' uh, most important assets are, which is their people. Um, we partner exclusively with SAP and Success Factors. Um, our heritage started from a, from a startup itself and very entrepreneurial. So um, really, really uh, excited to see these great uh, solutions um, and be part of this event. Thank you. Chris? Yeah, no worries. Chris Law, company called Future Group, based out in Melbourne, sunny Australia. The uh, the lockdown capital of the world, I think. Um, so, so Future Grid's a software company that focuses on providing, um, really supporting distribution utilities with the integration of renewable energy. And we do this by providing visibility of what is known as, well, in this part of the world, it's known as low voltage networks. In North America, it's secondary networks, but essentially we take smart meter data, combine it with other data from the utility and create visibility, um, you know, visibility of what is often invisible assets. And these assets, and this is important really, because as uh, in Australia, particularly where um, we've got some of the highest per capita rates of rooftop solar, but then as EVs start to evolve, there's a lot of pressure being put on the assets that connect most homes to the grid, you know, and the poles and wires in the street, whether to the point of standard engineering capabilities that are invisible to most users are starting to be challenged around voltage and capacity on those wires. Um, so we help them with that. And as a result, they're able to install more renewables, keep quality of supply uh, maintained to their regulatory requirements. So I guess we came into contact with SAP through some other programs. Um, and we'll talk about, I think we came through the Tel Aviv program for utilities, which is great. And we integrate our results. We do a lot of work in, the, in that part of the network and then integrate our results back into the a, a number of asset management modules in SAP. So that's us. And um, yeah, thanks, Stephen. 
Thank you very much, Chris. So I'll look, start things by uh, asking Mike um, to share with us you know, his experience working with corporations that are partnering startups. So Mike, many corporations are partnering startups nowadays. And uh, in your engagements with customers, have you encountered re requests from customers who are actually asking you to bring them innovations uh, that are not for, from, I'll say, big vendors like SAP, but from smaller players like the startups? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we're finding is that, you know, whilst um, you know, organisations like SAP um, and the core products that they bring to market, um, they're really wide in, in capability. Um, what we're finding is that customers often, often are looking for um, niche products that, that sit on top of it, that complement the solutions, but are more focused potentially on their industry or on their specific business challenge itself. Um, and, you know, if you think about the number of companies are out there, that those could be you know, um, numerous in terms of the, the, the variances and combinations, permutations of it. Um, so what we're finding is that as a, um, you know, a, a system integrator, a partner, um, customers are looking for us to bring um, the startup sort of uh, agility and solutions to the table. Um, bringing them under the one banner and uh, kind of being that sort of one trusted advisor and one hand to shake, uh, but at the same time really taking advantage of that innovation um, that uh, yeah, is, is really um, changing at, at blistering fast rates. Um, solutions that we're seeing today, um, you know, were a, a, were a thought uh, maybe six months to 12 months ago. So it, it's, it's really great to see that and companies are looking for that. And why do you think corporates are so keen to partner with startups not nowadays? I mean, what, what, what has changed? And why, why, why are they so keen? <laughs> look, there's there's probably a um, I think there's probably a couple of views. Look, I think one the technology and and uh, um, you know solutions such as the cloud um, or that are based on the cloud really enables some of that to go away. When you think about traditionally startups, you know, did they have the right investment for the infrastructure and stuff like that? Um, now it's, it's pretty much part of the course. They, they, they've got access to some of the best technologies that the, the largest organisations in the world have. Um, I think the, the, uh, um, some of the uh, things that typically slow larger enterprises down um, in terms of decision-making skills and, and uh, um, having to, to assess risk. Um, startups typically, I think, are a lot more agile. Um, you know, they, they're the decision makers, they can see uh, what, what the industry is calling for and they can respond a lot quickly. Um, typically, that, that's where you see um, you know, early stage growth through that startup function because they can respond to, to niche markets and, and niche requirements. Um, and I think corporations um, are starting to understand that. So to get the blend of it, um, of that sort of stable base, but then that, that uh, um, you know, that, that, that ability to, to answer a point solution very quickly, they, I think they're looking for both of them. So um, it, it's, it's uh, I think, one of the main reasons. So Mike, are there any you know, interesting case studies where you no know, rising had worked with a startup and you know, actually achieved something that helped your customers a lot? Um, geez, there's a, there's a couple of them. Um, you know, we've partnered with a couple of organisations. Um, Live Hire um, springs to mind. Um, they, we're, we're now seeing them win some great awards uh, where they've changed the way that uh, attracting talent and recruiting talent, complementing the SAP success factor solution um, is, is key. Um, we've seen other um, solutions such as growing teams where um, you know, it's a time-based solution that um, at the time the standard success factor solution uh, um, had a had a bit of a, a, um, a niche solution that was required to, to handle some of the complexities in, in the countries that we deal with in Southeast Asia. Um, and really what, what uh, um, we bring to the table in those sort of partnerships is, again, that one sort of face to the customer, um, the capability and knowledge and understanding to integrate um, not only just at technical level, but also at process level and user experience level to the, uh, the, the end um, solution. Um, and really from an a, uh, end user perspective, um, ticking that box around, look, this is the business challenge that you had. Um, end to end, we have one uh, solution to, 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 for you. Um, and really that then drives user adoption and ultimately get ROI for your solutions to the customers. And, and that's, that's kind of where, where we found ourselves being uh, um, good partners from that perspective. 
It's very helpful, Mike. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Now over to you, Chris. Um, no future grid took part in the SAP.io Teller V Foundry program. Uh, can you share with us more on your experience uh, working with the Foundry during the Teller V Utilities program? And you know how, how exactly is uh, Future Grid solution aligned with SAP's utilities industry solutions? Yeah, no, no problem. So yeah, you're right. Um, we were part of the Tel Aviv program for utilities. I think the first one for utilities, um, which was pretty amazing, I would say, for us. Our um, our team, our uh, SAP IO team of um, Lior and Inbar and Stephanie was our crew, and they were super, super helpful. The whole program was actually very well organized. I've been part of many um, programs in energy and yeah, this is easily one of the best um, for us. And we got a lot of uh, good feedback. We had a lot of engagement with the product team out of Germany for, for utilities and energy, which was fantastic um, and gave us a lot of insight about really what you, your question around how do we fit into the portfolio that is SAP because it's quite broad. And I think it comes back to what I was saying before is the solution that we have. In fact, we were, I think we were the only company outside of Europe in the program. Um, so representing down under, you know, get some gold medals for, for our friends in Australia. But um, so we're quite proud of that. But predominantly it's because the problem we solve is kind of being seen first here in Australia. And it's um, starting to evolve into Europe and North America, but it's not quite there yet. Once they get some, you know, large densities of these renewable technologies installed in customers' homes, uh, so I think this, I think the team really saw uh, an opportunity to look at a very niche product offering, but solving a very new and emerging problem in a, in a sort of market-leading country like Australia in that space and better on, and trying to fit it into a gap that they see in the market. And as a result, for me, it's been pretty amazing about the, obviously the reach that SAP has in utilities. I think you've got something like 900 utility customers. I think if I count, there's probably a thousand in the world and you've got 950 of them as customers. So, you know, a pretty good, pretty good channel to market, I would say, for a company like us. And as a result, you know, we've been able to knock on the door on most utilities in anywhere around the world by just, dealing with the irrelevant account execs, which has been really, really good. So, so our experience has been really second to none and, and one of the best that I've ever um, been a part of and you know, highly, highly recommended to anyone really. Great, Chris. Um, so you already have quite a number of customers in Australia and to me personally, I think that's quite a great achievement for a startup. Uh, can you share with us your secret sauce? How, how do you manage to win now, all these deals with your utility companies uh, based over in Australia. Wow, you know, it's an amazing sales team of, <laughs> that we've created. Um, no, I, it's, it's, this, it's, it's the age-old story that you're an overnight success, but it's taken you 10 years to get there, you know. And I think um, really the for, for Future Grid, um, our journey has been quite long. Um, but the recent success, and, you know, we're pretty much now deployed in every utility in Australia, which has been great for us, give or take one or two that we're still trying to win, and some of them are SAP customers, so we'll be working on that. But um, the, it's really about the market need and the market timing that the problem we're solving, which is very, I guess, unique and niche, um, is what really everyone wants right now. And there's really no other, well, as far as we can tell, there's not many other people in the market solving it. Um, and that's really driven um, some great success, um, which we hope to then carry over into, you know, more global markets as that starts to evolve into Asia, particularly, um, which is we're seeing accelerate really quickly in this space, probably faster than the other North American and European markets. So um, I think the secret in utilities, and I guess it's the same in any large industry like energy or mining, et cetera, they're very big and they're very slow. And you need, we've had to build a business model around very long sales cycles. Um, but the, the, the disadvantage of being slow and cumbersome and sometimes taking a very long time, um, the advantage is, is uh, that when you do win those customers, um, which has pretty much been the, I think, the SAP success model in, in that segment, once you kind of end, 
um, it's very difficult to be displaced. So it's a very, so then they just end up building more and more capability on your product to solve those problems. And so we've found that to be really, really good for us. So um, it's not just the fact that we've got all the customers or many here, it's, it's the fact that it's, it's, the, it's the usage of that product that on how they use it and the additional things they use it for across the business, which, um, and therefore the longevity of that in their organization. You know, we've never had, I think we've got a 100% retention rate at the moment. Now it's still small and we're still early, but that's not, be, maybe it's because we're amazing. And I'm sure that's the reason I tell myself to why it's happening. But I think part of it is, a big part of it is actually once you're in these kind of clients and you're delivering value and you, you have to be significantly better than us or another product, like 10x better, I think is the same to be displaced in this environment. So that's great for us. And um, yeah, and so our alignment with SAP is strong because the results, um, so we produce certain analytical outcomes using, you know, data from smart meters and other sources, but mainly smart meters. And um, mainly they operate that out of SAP. So the, the results and insights or recommendations we provide go back into those core you know, operating systems of the utility, which includes SAP and, and others. But yeah, I think that's become, it became, become quite integrated even before any partnerships or uh, formalities were there. It's become a natural fit for us about where the data goes for, um, for action. That's awesome, Chris. Thank you so much for sharing. To clo close things off, uh, I would like to go back to Mike. And uh, Mike, what do you think are the opportunities that exist for startups? in the future partnering with SAP as well as SAP partners like Rising? Um, that's a very open-ended question, <laughs> Stephen. Um, look, I think uh, um, you know, as we see the world recover from where we are right now, um, I think the focus is, is really uh, moving towards um, you know, people um, getting them back into to offices in certain um, you know, in, in different different guises, um, different levels of comfort, so on and so forth. Um, to be able to uh, effectively um, make sure that you're engaging those that, that team and, and you're uh, developing that career or their careers and, and effectively realigning them to your, your corporate uh, vision, um, I think is going to be in a, a very, very um, key focus of organisations. Um, but at the same time, also balancing the fact that a lot of people also want to continue to work remotely and, and work from home um, and, uh, you know, look at that sort of work-life balance that they, they've got to a certain extent as well. Um, I think combining some of the, um, the solutions that are out there to, uh, um, to, to, to handle uh, that, that sort of, that mix is key. Um, there's you know, learning development solutions that are, are starting to, 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 to be put out there, the, um, the time shift to solution around um, managing your, your, um, uh, your shift workers, things like that are, are really awesome um, uh, bits of innovation that uh, I think um, organisations will, will look to, to leverage. Um, and given the, the relationship that we typically have with the, uh, the, the, the HR, uh, group of organisations where, where that is their focus and how, how can they improve their, their uh, team, team members' sort of work-life balance and, and uh, engagement. Um, bringing solutions like that to the table, I think, is really a, a, a key uh, um, a benefit of working with, with companies like SAP and Rising. Um, but you know, the, the reality is, and this is the, the, the great thing about um, you know, startups and, and uh, um, uh, programs like this, is um, that next solution may not even be here right now um you know the 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 way that um you know we're starting to see companies um respond to some of these requirements um vaccine passports and things like that as as uh, as as uh, solutions um sort of get rolled out um yeah you know, who would have thought that we would have needed that before but yeah you know, that, that's something that we now start to have to, to think about um as regulations change and, and having to to respond to, to those changes as well um, those solutions start to come up, and and uh, you know again we're we're looking to our startup network, our ecosystem of partners, um, to bring a holistic view to our customers, um, and that really you know, marries not only the the, the SAP um, solution um, and the great rich deep sort of function over that, but also the the, the great sort of um, point solutions that, that the startups can bring to the table as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, Mike. That's very insightful. Thank you uh, once again to 
Chris and Mike for sharing your time with us today. We'll go back to the pictures now. And next up will be Movers. And introducing Movers will be Adam Adil, uh, who's their mentor. Adam, please. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you for the opportunity to introduce Brad Parsons from Movis. Um, when I first heard about Movis, I was so impressed by the fresh take Brad and his team have taken to remote monitoring and asset health prediction. The Movis solution is so much easier to deploy than traditional condition monitoring methods, but the underlying technologies are really powerful. Together with our friends at Rising, the Movis integration takes these asset insights uh, together with the live rich data that's available in our customer SAP systems and combines them together to drive real uh, tangible reliability outcomes for our customers. Most importantly, these live insights can help us start to dynamically adjust our maintenance strategies that are executed in SAP. If a problem is detected on a machine, we can be alerted and trigger a plan to fix it before it breaks. Alternatively, if the machine's healthy and we can choose to defer maintenance and we don't fix it if it ain't broke. Ultimately, this integration sets a foundation for closed loop AI and machine learning to build better asset maintenance strategies and make our customers' machines the best run machines in industry. Over to you, Brad. Well, thanks very much, Adam. That was a great introduction. I'm really excited to be part of this program and, and also working with SAP and Rising. Uh, the three of us have come up with what I think is a fantastic solution. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is just walk through who we are and what we do and also um, talk about how we've collaborated together to build an integrated uh, solution between our product and the SAP product. So what we do is we've built, as Adam said, and it was an excellent introduction, end-to-end -end solution for machine monitoring. We're really disrupting the space, which has been, uh, I guess, the same way for many, many decades. Uh, in terms of the predictive maintenance uh, market size, it's, it's there on the screen, but we're looking at sort of 12.7 uh, billion by uh, 2025. And the compounded growth is quite significant. Uh, as a business, I think we're still masquerading as a startup, but you likely be call us a, a scale-up. Uh, we currently have processed on the slides, it'll say 100 million. Uh, we've actually processed in the order of 150 million health samples across our platform. Uh, the team is entirely based out of Brisbane, but we currently monitor machines in, uh, or thousands of machines across about 14 countries globally. When you look at the, uh, the world, uh, you'll basically see that um, we have about seven, over 7 billion people and about, uh, about 2.3 billion machines. It's enormous. Uh, and to Chris's point about the electricity grid, uh, we've basically got, you know, almost half the world's energy goes into uh, powering uh, machinery. Uh, what you won't notice behind the scenes is only about 3% of those are actively monitored, uh, which is an enormous opportunity, obviously. When you look at our key industries, uh, we've really, really been focused on sort of heavy industry. Um, that's where our focus is. You would have seen behind my screen uh, some of our fit machines, uh, and those fit machines are, are powering industry. They're monitoring them seven by 24. Um, we can tell whether they're going to fail before they do. When you look at the status quo, currently uh, humans are going out to unsafe places. Uh, humans are collecting data, and those same humans are analysing the data. Uh, this is how it's been, and you know, for most industries, this is the way it operates. Uh, we're seriously disrupting that by deploying our wireless sensors. Uh, these units can be up and running in five minutes, um, and then ongoing, we're, we're analysing those with our AI engine. The so Fitmachine uh, really is not a product. Uh, it's a series of products wrapped up in a service, as you can see there. It's a uh, as a service machine monitoring. No, we haven't seen any other uh, solutions like it on the planet. Uh, many people will deploy sensors, uh, they'll deploy AI, they'll deploy all the elements that we have, uh, but we're unique as far as we can tell across the industry. Um, the, the motivation for Fit Machine actually came from my left arm, the thing I strap on and that tells me the health and condition, my fitness, my activity, uh, or otherwise. Um, the units itself are literally this big and can be on and up in minutes. Uh, we're the fastest deployed solution, as Adam said, uh, on the marketplace. Uh, using a mobile app and the QR code, which you're all familiar with, thanks to COVID, uh, anyone can install these uh, from anywhere across the globe. Um, you're up and running in less than five minutes and the machine's starting to learn. Within a week or two, we've basically understood how that machine operates and we're able to tell you when it's not uh, operating at its best or when it's trending towards a failure. 
the units themselves, uh, as you see there, um, I've described how they operate, but I'll just reinforce that. Uh, this is automatic. Uh, it's automatic collected, automatically analyzed, automatically calibrated. Uh, we've made it so simple that anyone can adopt it and anyone can bring it on. You don't need training. Uh, it's literally out of the box and away you go. I uh, mentioned before that we're operating on many, many industries. Um, these are just some of them. Uh, where there's heavy industries, where there's motors, pumps, fans, there's a variety of assets I'll show you in a sec. Uh, but we effectively have uh, almost a horizontal application that operates in many verticals. These are just some of the examples of typical machines that we monitor across industries, uh, but I can assure you there's a lot more than that. Uh, even in the dairy industry, we monitor, we monitor homogenizers and pasteurizers. When you look at an industry and an environment uh, that people have to operate in, uh, this is dirty, we call it the three Ds of dirty, dark and dangerous. Um, if you're sending humans in to collect machine health samples, uh, you're putting your people at risk and safety is at the core of everything we do. Uh, if I go to the next slide, you'll see some of the complexity of the environments and the size of the environments. Uh, you could have hundreds of people operating these plants and thousands of machines. Uh, the, the complexity of trying to manage that and, and maintain that and by combining uh, the, the skills of Mobis uh, rising in SAP, we're able to give the power back to the users so they can get ahead of any failures and be able to uh, operate uh, in a far more efficient manner. Uh, you can see it there. It's very visible. Uh, it's very easy to spot in the plant. You're not climbing over trying to look for the sensor. We've made it safety orange uh, so that you know customers are not confused about where it is. Uh, if they do need to go uh, close to that machine, we want to make sure they do that in the safest possible way. So all of this data that we're generating, all these insights uh, and predictions of failure um, are very useful but the most powerful thing you can do is put it in the hands of the customer so that they can make better decisions in more timely. Uh, what I wanna show you is a quick video uh, of the partnership we've uh, made with Rising and with SAP and how we've built that integration. Thanks very much. This is a demonstration about how connecting Movis into SAP can add value to a customer. Here we have the Movis Machine Cloud. The Machine Cloud receives sensor data from the Movis Fit Machine sensor and uses artificial intelligence to identify temperature, vibration, and overall anomalies. Here we're looking at station feeder conveyor number nine. It's a pretty bad actor, as you can see from all the red and yellow. If we look at the AI output, we can see vibration condition spikes every few hours. So how do we get this information into SAP where it can be useful to someone in asset management? Rising has developed a connector uh, for the Mobis Machine Cloud to pass data into SAP Predictive Asset Insights built on the SAP business technology platform and using SAP's cloud application programming model, the rising connector receives data from the machine cloud and translates it into the format needed by PAI. Once in PAI, the data is visible in both the indicator table and the 2D indicator chart. Using standard rules functionality in PAI, alerts are generated when the vibration data coming from Movis breaches certain limits. Now, if we look at the external ID of this equipment, we can see that not only is this equipment connected to the Movis Machine Cloud, but it's also connected to a backend S4 HANA system. This means that within a couple of clicks, we can turn the information from Movis into a notification for processing in an S4 HANA system. An alert processor could also review an existing notifications and work orders from within PAI to determine if existing work should be brought forward or made a higher priority. Here's that new notification in S4HANA. Now you've seen the end-to-end -end from sensor data in Movis through rules functionality and indicators in PAI, and finally to the notification in S4HANA. Rising, Movis, and SAP working together improving asset management outcomes for customers. Thanks very much. I think we're just cutting back to our slides. Well, I thank you very much. I'm obviously I just want to reinforce the fact that by combining the power of rising SAP and our Mova solution, they're able to empower customers to get ahead of failures and to action those failures uh, in the safest and the quickest possible manner. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Brad. And thank you very much, Rising for this great collaboration. 
And last but not least, we have Hackerus who will be sharing with us uh, more about their solution. Uh, introducing Hackerus will be Mohamed Saifullah, who is their technical mentor. Saif, please. Thank you, Stephen. Um, thank you for the opportunity to uh, introduce Hakarus. It's been a pleasure working with them. Um, Hakarus definitely augments the intelligence in uh, asset intelligence network space by uh, seamlessly integrating with the digital trends uh, that EIM registers, bringing great value in maintenance and operation um, and in collab collaboration by uh, identifying faults on the basis of their image recognition classification capabilities, especially in the space, the space of uh, visual inspections. So without further ado, let me introduce JJ Price from Hakarus. Thank you for the introduction, Saif. Um, so greetings and konnichiwa. Uh, my name is, again is JJ Price. I'm the global sales manager at Hackerus, uh, based in Kyoto, Japan, uh, with a team of now over 80 people. Uh, with seven years of experience and a new round of fundraising under our belt, I'm happy to be here to talk about our AI visual inspection solution, which is um, integrated now with SAP AIN um, called Spectro. So Spectro allows for smarter inspections for defect, error, and anomaly detection uh, for surfaces, parts, and uh, various products and components. And that we provide uh, best in class, class performance here. Uh, we have worked with customers across the globe to add AI-enabled machine vision for quality inspections. And we have saved these customers on average about 30% on costs associated with uh, quality checks. Uh, we can start training AI models with as little as 20 images, which makes adding new models uh, much easier. Uh, we also only need good samples to start the training for our models, which helps when defects are rare or costly um, to collect. So this lowers the barriers when compared to other solutions, leading to faster deployment. And we're able to do this because in addition to deep learning approaches, we are pioneering sparse modeling based AI technology. This allows for AI that works with small data sets and is explainable, while also being lightweight and using very uh, little energy. Uh, I think the metrics are about 1% of what you would typically see in a, derp, a deep learning solution. So uh, in a comparison on the chart on the right, uh, this is between SVM, the classifier, and uh, CNN, which is deep learning for defect detection on solar panel surfaces. Um, and as you can see by the numbers, uh, our solution Spectro only needed 60 images as opposed to the 800 images uh, to provide uh, results faster and with higher precision. And if we take a look at the way inspections are done today, most of it is done manually, which makes it challenging due just to how humans behave. Um, this is no fault of our own, but every individual is different. We get bored of repetitive tax, uh, tasks, and uh, we also like to get paid for our time. So the challenges that we see um, come from this pressure for higher quality inspections. And um, some of the challenges that we see are inconsistent quality, depending on the inspector who's looking at the asset, um, errors caused by fatigue and other things, and uh, increased costs due to the manual labor or uh, uh, poor inspection quality. And, and these are all common challenges uh, that industries face. So Spectro can address these challenges with capabilities for defect detection of surfaces such as wood, metal, plastics, uh, leather, and uh, most other uh, materials uh, with surfaces. Uh, it can also be used for detecting missing parts and misalignments in products and assets. And uh, when it comes to components such as circuit boards, our pattern matching works well and reduces false positives compared to competing solutions. Um, Spectro also comes packed with uh, functionality features such as heat mapping, uh, and this is for human explainability. So by highlighting areas based on the probability of a defect being present, um, the user can understand uh, where to focus on when looking at the asset. Our solution also has uh, pre-processing uh, features, auto-cropping features, um, and lastly, uh, an anomaly score calculation that indicates the severity of a defect. And this is useful for uh, adjusting the threshold of what you want the AI to detect as a defect. So we have saved customers uh, time and money in various industries and for different inspection targets. Um, many of our customers are from industries such as oil and gas, uh, utilities, electronic manufacturers, automotive, automotive and uh, railway. 
And uh, inspection targets include things like utility poles, construction materials, circuit boards, assembled parts, and components. And by adding spectrovisual inspection data to AIN, uh, customers can track the condition of physical assets using images and can be also flagged for further action. Um, Spectro also adds value by increasing the speed of visual inspections, uh, lowering labor costs, and providing higher quality and consistent results. And we have integrated Spectro with SAP AIN by creating a middleware layer that allows communication um, between our Spectro cloud module and uh, SAP AIN. Um, and it's triggered by certain conditions, such as uh, uploading images uh, for asset identification. And the, app, the analysis itself is done uh, on the Spectro cloud, and the results are then sent back for easy access through SAP AIN. Um, and for our integration demo, uh, I chose a use case uh, to look at wooden pillar inspection at a Japanese temple. Um, and this is for uh, maintenance and repairs. So in this scenario, uh, you could imagine an operator uh, would log on to AIN and uh, navigate to the asset. Um, after capturing images of the pillars, uh, the operator up would upload the images for inspection. Um, and then the inspection results would be displayed and added um, to the assets record. And uh, in the case of a detected defect, a uh, notification uh, would also automatically be created. And so here's a video of how it all works. Here, we will introduce the integration of Spectro Cloud. We have three windows, Spectro, Middleware, SAP AIN. The middleware displays how it connects Spectro and SAP AIN. To demonstrate, first an equipment item is created. The middleware is configured to fetch all of the equipment. Next, an identification image is added to the equipment and downloaded from SAP AIN to the middleware. It is then uploaded to Spectro and appears in the dashboard. Once analyzed in Spectro, the results are transferred back. Features such as anomaly scores and heat maps are now accessible on SAP AIN, alerting customers to trigger maintenance and investigation requests. So um, together uh, with the help of SAP IO and their team, we were able to quickly integrate our solution in a short period of time. And now that the integration is completed, uh, you'll be able to find Spectro for AIN on the SAP store in the near future. Uh, so Spectro is also customizable for the customer specific inspection target and a uh, uh, use case. So uh, we're looking to connect with interested parties to get started. And I just wanted to thank uh, everyone uh, involved and we look forward to creating more value for SAP and its customers in the future. Um, please contact me at jj.price at hackers.com if you want to learn more. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, JJ. And thank you very much once again to all the startups who have presented today and for all your hard work over the past few months integrating your solutions with the relevant SAP product. All the startup products will be listed on the SAP store very soon. So do look out for them. If any of the startups uh, interest you today, feel free to drop us an email and we'll be sure to facilitate an introduction to you. Now, SAP.io, uh, we organize new programs every six months. And I'm pleased to share with you today what's coming up. First and foremost is our future, and future, future of work uh, cohort that will be launching sometime in September. Uh, remote work nowadays is extremely common because of the pandemic. And we were looking at solutions that can help address some of the challenges uh, related to not only remote work, but also what the future of work will look like. We are already in the midst of selecting the startups and we will be uh, ready to make an announcement towards the end of the month when uh, we launch the program. Separately, sustainability is a very important you know, focus for SAP. And we are very pleased to uh, launch the sustainability program in APJ for the first time this coming uh, September. Uh, applications are now open and uh, we expect that the program will be launched sometime starting in October. If you know of great startups that have solutions uh, dealing with circular economy, energy efficiency, carbon track tracking, as well as you know, a socially responsible supply chain, 
do reach out to us and uh, make an introduction. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, for joining us today at our demo day. And uh, we look forward to further engagements with you in the next few months ahead. Thank you.